not the first time I'm speaking in this space. And uh, I can vividly recall the first time that that happened here. Um, I've spent a great deal of time here in, since I started here at, at CFS, but that first night is indelibly inked in my memory. And it was with a great deal of excitement and not a little nervousness that I presented a bit about my upbringing and values and hoped that they would be in alignment with a school that I was still getting to know, but I was already beginning to love. And as you might have guessed, this was the first night as a part of, that I spoke to the community as part of my interview process. Today, my nervousness is a bit less, but only a bit less, because in the silence, my heart was just beating so fast. Um, my excitement is even greater, and my love and appreciation for CFS has grown exponentially. That first day, the thing that I remember most is the middle school first year student who asked me a question she had explored in her social studies class. The question was, if you could change something that this Statue of Liberty is holding in her hand, um, what would you change? What would you change it to? Pause for a moment. This word cloud was created from thoughts you all shared recently about CFS. And it is so accurate in its reflection of what stood out to me on my first visit and continues to feed my appreciation from the school. And you're going to see in just a moment that I've circled some of the ideas that came to me that first night about that interaction with that student, um, which are here. When I think of that student, I was struck, first of all, by the fact that she cared enough to show up at an event that was not likely to be fun nor entertaining for an 11-year-old. But she knew it was an important event in the life of her school, and she wanted to participate. Based on her question, it was clear to me that what she did in her classes was dynamic and reflective and incited real intellectual engagement. They made her think critically, and she felt moved to share that experience with me. As a first year, she felt empowered and was confident enough to stand up in front of a room full of adults and ask her question confidently and articulately. During my response, I gave some wrong information about the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I got wrong what it was made of, um, as well as what she actually holds in her hands. But this first year was, it's up here too, she was compassionate enough to wait until after the presentation to let me know about the misinformation. <laughs> and she was caring enough to correct me. I left my visit thinking, wow, CFS is growing phenomenal young leaders and thinkers. And I see examples of this every day in our classrooms. Here in my third year, my optimism about CFS continues to grow. We are in a great place with a phenomenal student body, highly committed families, look around the room, um, an extraordinary talented staff, and a visionary board. And as we work to achieve the goals and initiatives of this strategic vision, I am excited about our future and energized by what we are going to accomplish over the next few years. The plan we present today is the result of many months of comprehensive canvassing, careful listening, and critical discernment. Together, we examined how our work reflects the mission of the school, where our mission is thriving, where it needs tending, in order to create a vision that will not only serve our students today, but will secure the future of CFS for generations to come. So I just want to take a minute to give us a brief reminder of the process and how we got here. Um, it was the winter of 2016-17, during that school year, that a strategic planning committee composed of 14 students, staff, and board members began work. We engaged a national consultant to conduct local and national research on the educational landscape and to lead our community-wide data gathering process. Information was gathered through a comprehensive online survey of current students and families, board members, alumni, and staff, 
and through in-depth telephone conversations. In all, more than 400 community members shared their thoughts. After the surveys, there were five subcommittees formed, um, facilities, program, culture, advancement, and finance. And these subcommittees included members of the steering committee as well as an additional 40 members of the staff and board. So it truly was a, a comprehensive um, group working on this. After engaging in robust discernment processes through the spring of 2018, um, each of the committees submitted uh, their recommendations and then the steering committee worked on prioritizing those recommendations and creating a draft of the strategic vision. The final goals and initiatives that I'm going to talk about tonight and that are part of the dream that drives us represent the compilation of the steering committee recommendations as well as refinements made by the entire board. So I want to take a moment to thank everybody who participated in the development of this vision and in the surveying and all of the conversations. Our students, our parents, our alums, um, the strategic planning committee, our staff, and of course the board whose gaze has remained consistently focused on CFS's future. All of this effort and community collaboration has resulted in a strategic vision that builds on and reimagines our fundamental and enduring principles to realize a future where what we do here will impact not only our students and community, but literally the world. Yes, friends, we are dreaming big. And that's why this name for the plan resonated so profoundly. Um, we have always been driven by our dreams and vision of what education can and should be. The concept of a dream that drives us, it's in our DNA. It connects our past, our present, and our future. Our founders have consistently said that they did not set out to create the school we now have, but their vision was a grand one nevertheless. By refusing to send their children to the segregated schools of Durham, marked by racism and inequality, and choosing instead to create a school grounded in equal and ethical treatment of all students, regardless of race or identity, our founders were dreaming big. By placing the highest priorities on understanding and responding to the needs and desires of students, by authentically and unapologetically putting children at the center of all of their work, they were dreaming big. By using Quaker principles as a foundation for meaningful education and the creation of a just, loving, and purposeful community, they were dreaming big. And by founding a school with the central question consistently asked was, are we serving a useful and beneficial purpose in society? They were dreaming big. And it was not easy. Let's not make any mistake about that. There were hostile neighbors. There were shots fired into the lower school. There were financial challenges over the years. Um, Peter Klopfer, one of our founders, was involved in a Supreme Court case at the time that the school was in its infancy um, and winning that Supreme Court case, by the way. Um, there was a court fight in the 1980s to shield CFS from state-mandated standardized testing, uh, a battle we won based on the recognition of the court that CFS, of CFS's highly effective teaching and testing methods. It was not an easy path, but CFS has never been guided by the path of least resistance. Our goal has always been to do what is right for children, educators, schools, and society. The dream that drives us articulates our next set of aspirations for carrying our mission and philosophy forward. And it's encapsulated in three big ideas. We are working to be a beacon of inclusion and equity. A learning environment for the students of the future now, and a global resource and exemplar for child-centered education. So what does this mean? 
According to the World Economic Forum, the top 10 skills needed to thrive in 2020 are complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making, service orientation, negotiation, and cognitive flexibility. I feel like CFS, check, 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 check. <laughs> Research has consist consistently shown that participating in culturally, racially, socially, economically diverse environments aid in the development of all of those capacities. When diversity is present, we are forced to think more deeply and comprehensively. We have to be more flexible and work harder to collaborate, engage, and problem solve. Given the ever-increasing need for confidence in all of these areas, it's imperative that CFS expand on its long-held commitment to be a diverse, inclusive, and equitable learning community. To become a beacon for equity and inclusion, we will achieve a series of institutional goals to ensure that our community is attractive to and supportive of the broadest diversity of students and families. Not a dome, it's in the back there. Um, has done a wonderful job as our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and now we look to identify additional unit staff to support our equity and inclusion initiatives, to be boots on the ground in those units that they know best. As part of this, we will complete our curriculum work, expand our staff professional development in equity ed education, develop new community partnerships to connect our students with the diversity of our neighbors and of our area, and continue our initiatives to keep CFS financially accessible. As we make these changes, we also know that we need to be able to communicate our values and our goals effectively to the broader community. By better defining and communicating how our mission and values are translated into a robust, challenging, and inspiring educational experience, we will, it, we will be enabled to reach the broadest diversity of families whose values and goals align with ours. A learning environment for the students of the future now. What does this mean? Um, this goal and its initiatives are designed to ensure that we're providing the most robust, effective, and intellectually stimulating environment possible for our students. We know that the strength of a CFS education rests on the staff, of our skilled and talented and dedicated and caring staff members. Um, you, there are no students in the room right now, but um, its families and our students have consistently talked about the fact that um, it's the relationship between our staff and the, the students that is a major draw for, for coming to CFS. By examining and enhancing our compensation structures, we are looking to more effectively honor the work of our staff and enable us to be able to continue to attract and retain innovative and inspiring educators. We also want to complete the building of our student support framework. Um, educational research has shown that there are positive and lasting impacts um, for, of, a, of effective educational support for all students. So all students need effective support, regardless of whether they have a specific learning difference or not. Um, each student has their own unique learning profile. And so when there is an opportunity for there to be, um, for us to be responsive to their unique needs, that means that all of the children are, are, are benefiting. With this initiative, we strive to provide our students with the most effective learning supports to help them be their best selves. We've been addressing the issue of learning support for some time now. Um, some of you will remember that there were elements of this even in the last strategic plan. Um, and as of this year, we, have, we do have learning specialists in the early, middle, and lower schools. And, and while we have funded this position, we have not yet found the right person to fill the upper school position, but we are hoping to, to do that soon. Our unmet needs in this area are middle school guidance counseling, funding for training of all staff in differentiated learning, 
and enhancement of the integration of technology and technology classes into the curriculum. This plan looks to fill these gaps so that we can achieve our goals for a robust, comprehensive, and complete set of student support services that are fully integrated into our educational program and will serve the needs of all of our students and will be able to support the work of our staff who work with those students. And then finally, research shows that um, the classroom physical environment, its structural features, the, the lighting, the sound, noise, physical, the amount of physical space available to students, the capacity to make rooms flexible and accessible, all of those things can affect student learning. And that effective classroom design uh, can maximize educational potentials for all students. We've seen the dramatic impact that the renovations and construction um, that were part of the Building Friends campaign, uh, the revamping of the lower school, forest and mountain classrooms, the new library, the Quaker Dome, the addition to the middle school, um, and of course the Performing Arts Center. Um, we've seen how they have benefited our students. And our buildings have set, served us well but now I think we all recognize that it's time to take a look up the hill. Um, to enhance the vitality and efficacy of our upper school program, we need to envision new spaces that reflect and better support the student-centered learning that takes place there. Um, we recognize that this is probably the most substantial um, element uh, to part of this uh, strategic vision and it's going to require a significant investment from the entire community for us to really engage in a dialogue about what is needed um, and while there be a lot more conversation uh, about this there can, there can be no doubt that a newly inspired space will lead to even more inspired teaching and learning. To be a global resource and exemplar for child-centered education. Um, our program, as I mentioned at the beginning with, in talking about our founders, has always been on the cutting edge of progressive education. Mixed age groupings, comprehensive qualitative narratives, fully integrated socio-emotional curriculum, rejection of unnecessary standardized testing. Many of the schools now are just moving in the direction that CFS has always been. These things have been the hallmarks of a CFS education. We know, however, that if we are going to continue to evolve to meet the shifting needs of our students, um, we are also going to have to evolve. Uh, so we're developing an institute for teaching and learning to both illuminate and enhance our core strengths and uniqueness. The institute will develop programs for students and support professional development for our teachers as well as provide revenue generating training opportunities for educators from external organizations, other schools. Um, at earlier this um, semester, Anthony put together a list of the many different places that have come to CFS to learn more about what we do um, because they had heard such wonderful things about us. Having tested and proven the efficacy of our program and methods, we have much to share and this Institute for Teaching and Learning will help us to do that. Our vision for the Institute for Teaching and Learning will support the expansion of our summer and enrichment programs. It will serve as a central point for expanded summer travel and exchange programs. It will enable more of our students to engage in collaborative community and peacemaking projects with diverse groups of peers, especially through our Peaceful Schools program. It will be an incubator for new ideas and initiatives, a place where we can try things out and tinker with them before they become, possibly become a part of the fuller um, program. It will provide an opportunity to train others in our distinctive um, curricular, pedagogical, and community building practices. And it will be a significant revenue generating center that will help diminish our dependence on tuition. This is the vision that is going to drive us towards our bright future. Our big dreams for more fully embracing Carolina Friends School's potential to change the world. To achieve this, it's going to take collective effort and community support. So again, I thank you for being here to be a part of this um, rollout. 
Um, and I hope that this brief introduction has whet your appetite to know more, um, to ask questions, and hopefully excited your imagination about what is going to happen next with CFS. Um, before I, I close this, this part of it and we get to um, questions and, and from hearing from Mark, I did just want to let you know what has happened since we approved of the plan in May. Um, so we haven't just been twiddling our thumbs and, and holding back. Um, we've actually been making sure that to, to do some work on our implementation plan. Um, so what that has meant is thinking about what our timelines will look like for these different things, what our action steps are, um, thinking about the financial planning of how we're going to um, pay for these things over these next uh, four to five years. Um, we've also spent time uh, approving funding for the, some of the initiatives for next year, and some of the highlights from that include improved salary increases for our staff, um, the addition of tech staff, uh, middle school counselor for next year, as well as the part-time unit staffing for our diversity and equity work, um, and differentiation training for our staff are all things that we have, that we're making plans for um, funding next year. And this, through this spring and for the remainder of, of this year, we are actively working towards these, uh, towards some of our goals. One of the benefits of having had this pan out over a significant period of time is that we knew that some things were happening, and so we have been moving forward on some of these initiatives for more than, or for more than a year, actually. Um, in some ways, the hiring of the director of diversity, for example, we knew that was going to be a part of the plan. It had also been something that we had had a desire to do for some time, and so we went ahead and did it, even though we hadn't yet gotten to the end of the the um, approval of the strategic plan. So the things that we're working on this year, a compensation study looking at our, our staff compensation. We're doing our goal, our diversity and equity goal setting. Um, we're finishing up our self-study and curricular review. All of these things are already in process and well on their way to conclusion for this year. Um, and what's up next? Well, as you can see, Salim has been here videotaping and I've got things you know, poking out of me. Um, <laughs> so this presentation um, has been recorded. We're going to make this available for those of our um, community that weren't able to be here tonight. And there will be a strategic planning page, um, <laughs> which will, <laughs> which is going to, um, there'll be this information, but also a, there's a little bit more detail that will be on the page. And that's also the place where, as we move into the future, we're going to continue to update um, our progress towards our goals. And you'll be able to read a lot more about this um, in our We and Thee that will be published shortly as well. So much more information to, to come. I love this picture. <laughs> I don't know who took it. I don't know, Catherine, if you took it or if someone else did. Um, Carly. The real energy and impetus for all of the big dreams that we dream here at CFS are the children. We exist only to fulfill our desire to serve their needs. And if love is their superpower, then it's our love for them that empowers all that we do as we strive for the highest heights of excellence to achieve our mission, because they deserve nothing less. And we are certain that our vision for the dream that drives us is going to enable us to do this for them. So that's what I have for in terms of introduction. And, uh, We're so proud of the plan. We're so excited, and to you know, to feel that energy from you, um, it, it's really, I, you know, it, it's. Thank you.